Good morning, people. We are now on road 5066, which is a road that goes through the Nahal Kana Nature Reserve. And um, it's a, from a road 5 north towards Kedumim. In any case, there is an entrance here to Nahal Kana, to the stream, and we are going to walk along the stream now and enjoy some of the beauty. So follow me. The road uh, just behind us that we uh, saw is a uh, road number 5066, which is a north-south uh, road that is cut through the nature reserve. We are entering the Nahal Kana Nature Reserve. This area was originally declared as a nature reserve by the British during the British mandate in 1938. A good part of the area was declared as a nature reserve at that time and uh, that is actually a wonderful thing that the British did to preserve this area that has a very thick bush uh, that resembles, as you can see the scenery here, resembles the Galil and in other areas it resembles the upper Galil, areas like Miron and Sfat in the and uh, higher up towards the Lebanese border but no we are in the center of the Shamron we are at Nahal Kana so the road behind us is 5066 and this road cuts through the nature reserve the road itself was also actually cut out by the British as well uh, shortly after they declared this area as a nature reserve there was an Arab uprising or a revolt and uh, the British cut out that road in order to reach uh, bandits who were hiding in this bushy area and that road is is uh, very useful till today uh, and uh, there are difficulties it's a winding road uh, and it's a um, uh, there are difficulties in planning and expanding that road, widening the road and making it straighter because it goes through the nature reserve. So, as I mentioned, the British declared this area as a nature reserve in 1938. Then, as we know, we're in the Shamron, which is also considered the West Bank. This area was captured by Jordan in the Israel's War of Independence in 1948 and Jordan controlled the entire area of the Samaria, Shamron and Judea from 1948 till 1967. This is part of the area that was controlled by the Jordanians for those 19 years. While the Jordanians controlled this area, they gave away plots of land in the nature reserve in Wadi Kana or Nahal Kana. Uh, they gave them to Arab residents of a village to the east of us. We are walking to the west, the, the eastern side, to the east and then south of this valley. There is a Arab or Palestinian village that is called Dear Estia, and uh, the Jordanians gave plots of land to residents of that town, and uh, they, um, th those residents, continue to cultivate the plots of land 
that they planted orchards in and they enjoy the waters of the the stream in Nachal Kanan. Nachal means a stream. Now this area is a very the name of this place is unique because the name was preserved from the time of the Bible. We find the name Nachal Kana, the Kana Valley, in um, the book of Joshua. Joshua, the leader of the children of Israel, who led the children of Israel into the Holy Land, into the land of Canaan or the land of Israel, and captured the land from the Canaanites. And then, according to the Torah, Joshua divided up the land between the twelve tribes of Israel, the twelve sons of Jacob, each received a plot of land. And in the book of Joshua, we read about the borders between the different tribes of Israel. And uh, there are cornerstones or landmarks that the Bible uh, points out as cornerstones along the border between the different tribes. And here, if we look at Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 16, uh, verse 5, the territory of the Ephraimites by their clans was as follows. The boundary of their portion ran from and it gives us a, a, a list of different cornerstones of places that we can identify. Uh, and uh, I'm skipping. Touched on Jericho and ran on the, to the Jordan and westward. This is important. Ch uh, we're in chapter 16, verse 8 in the book of Joshua. Westward, the boundary proceeded from Tapuach to Wadi Kana, or Nachal Kana. The translation says Wadi Kana, which is the Arabic pronunciation, or the Arabic translation of Nachal Kana. In the, the Hebrew Bible, the original, it says Nachal Kana. And we're, again, we are in the book of Joshua, chapter 16, verse 8. The name of this valley, the name of this stream, the name of this um, I'm, I'm, I'm careful of saying river because it's not a river that flows all year but it, there are streams in this, in this valley that do flow all year even in the summer and we are in the end of the summer now in the end of September which is today it is very hot here there's a very hot sun and we are actually visiting Nachal Kana during the festival of Sukkot uh, tabernacles or su the huts and uh, we will see that many Israeli families come out to hike in the uh, in the valley which is a nature reserve I mentioned from the beginning that this area was declared a nature reserve by the British in 1938 and then the Jordanians captured the area in 1948 and then Israel liberated Judea and Samaria in 1967, 19 years after the Jordanians took this land. And in the 1980s, Israel again declared this whole valley as a nature reserve, an even larger area than what the British had declared in 1938. Here you can see as we're passing by the olive orchards, that are planted by the villagers of Deir Istia. And we're walking along this dirt road in the, uh, the valley, which is a nature reserve. Here we're seeing some sabris, the sabris, the prickly, um, uh, how do you say? Uh, oh, I'm at lost, lost for words. But I will take you back again and uh, recite the verse in the book of Joshua and point out how remarkable it is that the name of this valley has been preserved from biblical times until today and that is unique for valleys there are 
many places in Israel that the biblical name of a city or a hill was preserved, like uh, uh, Jerusalem, like Hebron, like Shechem, like Mount Tabor or Mount Tavor. There are many places that were are mentioned in the Bible and are preserved to this day, but a a stream. Uh, there, this is the this is a the unique case of a stream whose he, original Hebrew biblical name was preserved till this day. The in the Bible it's called Nachal Kana, which means the Kana stream, and in Arabic it's called Wadi Kana, by the Arabs till this day. And again, the Israeli Jews call this Nachal Kana as it was called in the Bible, and this place. This, the valley that we're walking along is the border between the tr- is tribes of Menashe and Ephraim. Menashe and Ephraim were the sons of Joseph and the grandsons of Jacob. The other ten tribes are all sons of Jacob, but Menashe and Ephraim are considered two tribes. Each one is considered a tribe. Menashe and Ephraim, and the valley the, to the north of us, which is to our, our right, to the right hand of the valley, looking up the hill, <coughs> that is the land of the inheritance, inheritance of Menashe. And to the left of us, looking up the hill above us, we can see an Israeli town above us, Yakir, and beyond that, another Israeli town called Nofim, which means scenery, beautiful scenery. The hills above us are to the south of the valley, and those that is the northern border of the tribe of Ephraim. The, the land of the inheritance of Ephraim extends from here to the south, all of the hills of Ephraim, which cl- include Tapuach, and Eli and Shiloh and Beit El, all of those are part of Ephraim. Now, as we're walking through this uh, beautiful nature reserve, and we're seeing the scenery that is unique and outstanding in the Shamron region, uh, but it, it preserves the ancient bushy scenery of the land as it was in the time of the tribes of Israel, that the tribes of Israel entered the land. And that too, we can see, we can see uh, in, the, uh, in the Bible. And I'm going to uh, show you how we can learn more uh, about this because the tribes of Joseph turned to Joshua and they said, the land is not enough for us. We, we need more land because we have a very large people. We have a large nation. And he said to them, if you have a large nation, then go and capture more land from the Canaanites or go and, and capture the, the forest, cut down the trees, and, and establish plots of land there because you have, you're complaining that you do not have enough uh, land uh, because you have too many people. If you have too many people, you have a, a large manpower. You have a great source of uh, working hands and you should uh, take that manpower and either fight the Canaanites to capture more land. Uh, I skipped the verses that, uh, well, it's here at the uh, uh, chapter 17, verse 12. The Masonites, the tribe of Manasseh, could not dispose the inhabitants of these towns, and the Canaanites stubbornly remained in the region. When the Israelites became stronger, they in, imposed tribute on the Canaanites. The Canaanites had to pay taxes to the Israelites, but they did not dispose them. They did not take over their land. And the Josephites, the Josephites are the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim, they complained to Joshua, saying, Why have you assigned us as a portion a single allotment and a single district, seeing we are numerous people whom the Lord has 
blessed so greatly. Now, if you look at a map of the division of the land amongst the 12 tribes of Israel, and then you look back at this verse in the book of Joshua, chapter 17, verse 14, they're complaining that they received such a small portion and they're such a large people. But actually it seems that the plots of land that Menashe and Ephraim received are some of the largest plots, the largest territories that were given to the 12 tribes of Israel. And Joshua says to them, if you are numerous, go up to the forest and clear an area for yourselves there. And he is referring to the forest of the Shamron that was similar to what we see here in the nature reserve. This is a unique area where the the nature, the, the bush, has been preserved. But this is what a great part of the territory of Menashe and Ephraim looked like when they received the portion of land. Can you see how green it is? We're in the middle of the summer. If we go to other places in the Shamron, we'll see a brown or orange or yellow scenery because it doesn't have so much green bush. And all of that was lost over, over history uh, as uh, people did exactly what uh, Joshua said to them. Go into the forest and clear an area for yourselves. Over 3,000 years since the tribes of Israel entered the land of Israel, they and other inhabitants of the land cleared out the forest. They cut down trees. They cut down bush. They built tirasot. Tirasa is a, a step is a in order to be able to cultivate the land they they built uh, terraces on the mountain and uh, so most of the shamron region today is covered with ancient terraces but doesn't have this thick bush again we can see here the orchards of the residents of diristia uh, nearby and uh, when we come and uh, hike, sometimes we can meet these uh, residents. And even uh, here, they, this is a Palestinian car passing us. If you notice, the license plate was white with green letters. In Judea and Samaria, there's a very complicated situation uh, regarding the governance of different parts of Judea and Samaria. If we described now in the Bible how the land was divided amongst the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, in current times, in the the, uh, the land was uh, has been divided by the government of Israel to give over a portion uh, areas to the control of the Palestinian Authority. Um, the Palestinian Authority are the government for many of the areas where there is a large Arab population. So, for instance, the license plate that we saw on the first car that passed by us was a white license plate with green letters, and that is issued by the Palestinian Authority. And then the, the second car that passed by us with a yellow license plate is issued by Israel, and those are Israeli citizens. Uh, confused? Don't worry. It just gets more and more confusing. I'm glad that you are still watching this video and uh, enjoying this tour. Th this is just a, a teaser in order to get you excited about hiking in the land of Israel. So start making your plans and send me a line. Let me know uh, what, you, uh, what dates you would like to tour the land of Israel. If you are in Israel, if you would like to join me on one of my hikes or city tours, then uh, let me know and uh, I will let you know what is available on, on your dates. And if you are outside of the land of Israel and are ready to join a tour or to plan your own tour or a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah tour for your family or Christian tours, again, send me a, send me a message on any of the platforms that you're following me, or you can email me directly to haivri, H-A-I-V-R-I, at gmail.com, or you can look me up. You can send a comment on the video. 
itself right any comment and and by the way i i look forward to seeing your comments so um tell me right in the comment section if you're enjoying this video if you think it's too short too long too fast too slow uh, your input is uh, very important to me very helpful now we've reached a you can see the grassy area and uh, this is a stream in the middle of the Kana Valley. Uh, it's a stream. We are at the end of the summer, so we can see that there is water flowing from the stream. And we can see Israeli families uh, picnicking here. Later in the day, there will be a lot more. There were actually a thousand people who came out to a uh, hike and picnic. Some of them hike down from Nofim, uh, the Kana Park, where I was the other day, and I've already posted a video from part of the hike there. A very, very beautiful hike, some of it through very heavy bush, uh, coming down the mountain from the southern slope uh, into Nachal Kana. And uh, many hike down from, from Karne Shamron, which is the northern slope of Nachal Kana. Uh, there are a number of different trails. In this video, I walked from the east to the west along the river bed, along this road that we're looking at now that cuts right across from the east, from road 5066, all the way into the valley. And just ahead of us, we can see a, a, a pool, a natural pool, that people are swimming in. This is called En El Batza. En El Batza. And further in to the west, there's another pool that is called uh, en, uh, en Tanur, the, uh, the oven stream. And what is very special at that stream is that there are water turtles, natural water turtles, that live in that stream, which is a, an amazing phenomenon. It's uh, unique and very beautiful. And uh, it's a bit of a walk to get in there, but if you've got the time and the willpower, it's a, definitely a, an experience to hike in there and uh, see the stream. Friends, I hope that you are enjoying these videos and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Please add some comments in the comment section. Let me know if you are enjoying and uh, come and visit. I'd love to see you here in the land of Israel. Be well. Oh, and watch more videos on the channel. Shalom.